Today is January 29th, 2014, and we're here at the headquarters of Pure Aqua, uh, located in Santa Ana, California, where we are getting ready to ship out a 40-foot containerized water treatment system. Uh, the container is fully insulated and has a full electrical package, including uh, overhead lights for illumination, um, a main disconnect box for main disconnect, and um, the brackish water reverse osmosis main disconnect as well. Uh, the power supply on this is 380, uh, three phase, uh, 50 hertz. That is stepped down to 220 single phase, um, giving power to all of our uh, our microprocessor as well as our uh, digital stager, um, and also our clean in place skid that is located in the back here. Um, the brackish water reverse osmosis system is capable of producing right around 66,000 gallons per day of product water uh, based on a 70% recovery. And the water uh, feed source is right around uh, 2,000 uh, parts per million or to uh, total dissolved solids. Um, the unit has two pumps. One is a feed pump for the um, reverse osmosis system and the other is a backwash pump for when the multimedia filter goes into its backwash cycle. On this skid as well we have um, pre-chlorination right before the multimedia filter. We have anti-scalant as, as well as uh, dechlorination before it enters the um, the first bank of membrane elements. After that process is gone through and the water is out of the last membrane, we have a post chlorination and then out to use. Um, in the back, we also have a heater and um, air conditioning unit to keep the temperature controlled inside the unit, um, as well as a clean and place skid for maintenance and lifespan of the membrane elements that is all integrated within the unit. In the controller area here we have a digital stager that uh, controls all the valves uh, open and close for when it's either in cycle or going through its backwash cycle um, and that's all controlled through uh, water pressure. Here we have a microprocessor controller that runs the RO system and also receives signal from the multimedia filter as well as pressure switches uh, for low pressure faults, high pressure faults, um, and then also an ORP controller for uh, monitoring ORP in the water. Um, here we have the reject flow meter for monitoring of your reject or concentrate water, as well as your permeate or product water monitoring. Uh, here we have a interstage pressure gauge for monitoring of the pressure throughout the membrane, as well as a sample port for sampling the TDS out of the permeate product In this water. area of the water treatment system, this is your feed or your inlet to the water treatment system. Here you have your feed pump, for the system as well as the backwash pump that is used for the backwash cycle on the multimedia filter, um, as well as the pre-chlorination right before the multimedia filter. After the water has gone through the multimedia filter, it is then onto a stainless steel filter cartridge housing for sediment removal. In line, we also have an ORP sensor for monitoring of the ORP in the water. After that, we have a low pressure switch for pump protection. If the feed water um, goes down below 20 PSI, the low pressure switch will shut down the system, protecting the system. After the system, we have a high pressure switch that works in the same sense. Uh, when it reaches a certain high pressure that we have it preset at, it will shut off the system, protecting the system as well. 
After that, we have a pump discharge pressure gauge. We have a throttle valve for control of the feed water into your first membrane, as well as another pressure gauge for inlet pressure to the first membrane. We also have a anti-scalant chemical dosing system, a dechlorination chemical dosing system, and after it has gone through its process and the product water has come out of its last uh, membrane, we then have a dechlorination chemical dosing system. In this area, we have the concentrate out where we have a concentrate pressure gauge for monitoring of the concentrate pressure. We have a concentrate control valve for flow control. We also have isolation valves to either run the line to the flow meter and out or run it through this valve, which actually is your clean in place or your CIP return back to the tank. Here we have a, another valve that is a 316 stainless steel that is either open or closed, uh, closed during normal operation of the water treatment system or open when you are running and doing a cleaning of the membrane. In this area of the container, this is where the clean and place skid or CIP skid is installed. Um, here we have your suction from out of the tank into the clean and place uh, pump. Uh, also in this area, you have a uh, level switch for control of the level in the tank as well as pump protection once again. Um, you also have a controller that is for control of the CIP uh, with indicator lights and on off switch. Um, you also have a recycle loop for when you have added chemicals to the tank and need to mix. It works as a mixing or recycling loop. Uh, we also have another stainless steel filter cartridge housing um, for any sediment removal, if any. Um, there is a pressure gauge for inlet pressure as well as a pressure gauge for outlet pressure so you can monitor the uh, life of the sediment filters inside. After you are done recycling and mixing your chemical, you are then ready to open your valve here and close your recycle valve. You are then able to monitor the flow to the membrane through this inline flow meter as well as your discharge pressure to the membrane with the pressure. In this gauge. area, you have all your points of connection. You also have a drain for the tank that is plumbed in line with the drain for the backwashing of the filter as well as your uh, concentrate or wastewater from off of the reverse osmosis system. And that is your three inch line here. Uh, this three inch line here is your inlet or your feed to the whole container. Um, this line here is your permeate or product water outlet that also has your injection point for your post chlorination.